This video is to announce that I've created a mini course that you can complete in a weekend that will teach you two things. First, it's going to teach you to read any microeconomic model like these on the board and to orient yourself towards those models so that you don't have to, you know, be frustrated when listening to a professor who sort of talks themselves in circles. And then the second thing it teaches you is how to build your own basic microeconomic models. And the reason for that is I've found uh, students can learn to build their models like fairly quickly, and that's really empowering. It sort of brings the excitement and the creativity and the vigor back into economics. But once you learn to build your own models, reading models that other people have authored is actually really easy. It's sort of like things fall into place. You, you know, you read the model, you read the variable names, and you're like, got it. And that's, that's a really great experience. So I've taught microeconomic theory for 12 years, and I've also taught upper level economics courses where I have students write papers where they build their own models. And I found even when students come into my courses having never built their models before, they can actually learn model building fairly quickly. So I'm convinced that the economics profession teaches microeconomics theory the wrong way. Like I think in general, the approach is going to be that you sort of learn an economic model the hard way where you're trying to grasp the intuition and it takes a long time and there's a lot of, a lot of explaining around the model and it's a frustrating process. And then you get to the end of that and then you start another microeconomic model that's different and it's, once again, you're starting on this frustrating journey of listening to the professor explain the new model. And in general, professors expect students to pick up the intuition for how models work by going through this really frustrating process over and over, like six or seven times, before it starts to feel better. And that is just the wrong approach. Because models actually follow rules, like there's rules that structure how these variable relationships show up in the model, and there's different roles for different variables in the model. And one source of confusion, I think, and frustration for students is that sometimes the same variable, like price or quantity or output or whatnot, it appears in different roles in different models. So like one model, it's the starring role, and it's, you know, it's doing certain things in that role. And then you move to the next model, and uh, Price has a different role where it's a little bit more on the sidelines. And uh, that, that can be really confusing because students will be like, wait a second, we just mapped this onto a different reality. Has reality changed? Is the situation different? And that's not exactly the right approach. The right approach is to first understand just what are the basic patterns that are purely mathematical that don't even map onto reality. And then once you understand those patterns, then you can see how does this particular author of this model map reality onto the different roles in that model. And then you're kind of holding loosely to that mapping because you know, okay, when we turn the page in the textbook and have a different model, we're going to map reality onto those roles in a slightly different way. So yeah, the basic goal in my mini course is for students to be able to read the model and orient themselves without hearing their professor uh, talk about it and try to explain it. Because yeah, explaining a model when someone is starting from a place of not understanding it, that can really take the brain in directions that are just like frustrating and don't make sense and just like add to this mess in, in the student's head. Whereas if you can just learn modeling and just learn the patterns and the rules first, then things do tend to fall in place. And I compare learning modeling to learning the parts of a car engine, where people who work on cars, when they open up the hood of the car, it may be a style of car that they've never seen before or never worked with before. And if they didn't know the parts and didn't know how the parts generally connect, that might be really overwhelming and frustrating. But when they know the parts of a car, even if those parts are arranged differently, they can just orient themselves when they lift up the hood of the car by being like, that's the carburetor, that's the engine, that's the battery, that's the fluid, and you know, they can see something even though they've never seen that particular model before. And it's just like that with microeconomic modeling. 
So if you're interested in the course, I'll link to it below. And you might ask, what is the value of the course beyond the free content on this channel? Because I have a ton of content here. And I think there's two things the course does. One is it just takes you through step by step in an order that builds upon itself. But then second, there are the quizzes that sort of help you test your understanding, help you figure out, you know, are you are you identifying the, the roles in the model correctly? Are you identifying violations of the rules of the model correctly? Such that by the end of the course, you should be able to sort of be like, oh yeah, I get modeling. And then some people will just find the puzzles in the course kind of fun because at a couple of places in the course, I have you map some variables onto models yourself. And some of my students really think that's fun. Others are just sort of like, let's just get through this. I just want to be able to, you know, understand models without having to listen to long explanations. But either way, I hope you find it useful. Some people were asking for a course, and I think this is the most important thing for students to learn that I have a different approach to than most faculty. So I wanted that to be an option for you.